My rebel colleague, Jason Agnew, recently beat me to the punch in reporting that Carolyn Bennett, the Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs, supports the idea of making Aboriginal studies mandatory for all Canadian university students. Yes, mandatory, <laughs> according to Bennett, forcing the kids on campus to take such a course is all about doing the right thing. And hey, Bennett knows a thing or two about doing the right thing, doesn't she? Well, not really. Let's turn the clock back to April 28, 1998, when the Liberal MPs and the Cretchen government stood up en masse in the House of Commons to vo voice support for an incredibly heartless deal that denied compensation to thousands of hepatitis C victims. As you may recall, the hep C deal paid out more than $1 billion to Canadians who contracted the fatal disease through no fault of their own due to the tainted blood, but the compensation package applied only to those infected from 1986 to 1990, even though there was a preponderance of evidence suggesting that the government knew or should have known that the blood supply was at risk as early as 1981. But get this, even though Bennett is a medical doctor who should have been a champion of those patients who were left out in the cold, she joined her fellow liberals to void a, vote against a fair compensation package for all victims. So much for voting with one's conscience, so much for the Hippocratic Oath, so much for doing the right thing. Shame. Shame. What's interesting about the idea of having mandatory courses on Aboriginal affairs is how little press there's been on this somewhat chilling idea. By way of clarification, Aboriginal studies aren't scary. Rather, the fact that a government would try to coerce any student in a post-secondary environment to study any subject gives me the heebie-jeebies. Even more disturbing is the small amount of coverage that's been given to this issue by those in the media party is pretty much positive. But then again, nothing makes the media party kowtow to political correctness more so than reporting on Aboriginal affairs. Case in point, Toronto News Talk 1010 Morning Man John Moore recently penned a stunningly condescending column for the National Post regarding the inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal woman. Check out this excerpt, quote, can we admit that we already know a considerable amount about what ails the Aboriginal communities? It begins with just how large a portion of the non-Native community doesn't value the lives of Aboriginals. There's a reason why the CBC shuts down comments specifically for those of its online articles that discuss Native issues. The tenor of their remarks run the gamut from historical ignorance to quasi-white supremacy, end quote. Translation, the majority of Canadians are simply too dumb or too racist to weigh in on Native issues, so much so that the taxpayer-funded national broadcaster will actually prohibit dissenting opinions. What sort of Orwellian scenario is playing out here? In any event, with a federal minister supporting the implementation of mandatory university courses, and with the CBC deciding not to let the great unwashed masses weigh in on certain issues that were obviously too stupid and too bigoted to opine on, the message is clear. Big government and big government media know what's good for you, so keep your mouth shut, but keep your wallet open after all, this two-headed juggernaut has an insatiable appetite for your tax dollars. Ain't democracy grand? For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.